Hello, StarCraft fans, and welcome to another cast brought to you by StarCast TV. I am Niokin, and today we've got a Zerg versus Protoss. It's going to be Queen going up against Mini. And you know, I was looking on the StarCast channel and I was thinking to myself, man, we've gotten a lot of Terran versus Protoss lately. We need some Zerg versus Protoss in our lives. So I was going through the list of replays that I have saw these two and I thought that's the one man Queen versus Mini is always an exciting matchup for me especially after in that ASL a few seasons ago where Mini had that innovative cybernetics rush and it really caught Queen off guard so now every time I see these two face off I think to myself are we gonna see some more innovation in Protoss versus Zerg? Will Mini surprise me with a unorthodox build order? We'll see. So far, it looks like we are just gonna have the standard nine or 10 gate from Mini here. So he's gonna wanna get aggressive with his gateway pressure. And meanwhile, Queen gonna get away with a little bit of murder here. We're gonna have, I think, an 11 hatch opener. That seems to be the go-to style these days, or could be wrong, Caster Curse already kicking in. We actually are going to have the 12 hatch, and meanwhile, we did have the probe go for that center scout at bottom middle to see if he could intercept the overlord. Doesn't see it, and now you can see he's hooking around the top right. We'll find Queen in the first position, and we'll see that, hey, this guy went hatch first. Now, oftentimes, when I do watch Queen play, he generally just gets like a normal gas timing, like 245 gas, 230 gas. He's not someone like Soul Key, for example, who does go low eco. Now, this is interesting. He's going to act like he's going for a cannon rush. And we did see that Queen did already preemptively pull a, a drone here. I guess he was anticipating a move like this. But we, of course, see that this is just going to be a Nexus. It was gateway into Nexus. And this is already going to buy... A big, a big advantage for Mini, I think. That was five or four pro four drones pulled off of minerals for quite a long time. So a lot of lost econ. And you know, before the, before we saw that pylon wall, I was talking about how I really do think of as, think of Queen as someone that plays big econ in Zerg versus Protoss. He was really the guy that innovated the 973. But because his Econ has already been hurt, this 230 gas is probably comparable to something like a 215, 220 gas. Really low eco because of all the damage that this one single probe has already done. Now, of course, Mini did commit to double pylon and a cancel there, so it did delay his Nexus. So you do have to factor that into hurting his own build. Now, back in Mini's base, even though he had the gate opener, of course, he opted for the quick Nexus. First Zealot is going to be popping out, and I think Queen can probably figure out that, hey, you ended up skipping Zealots going into the Fast Nexus. And, you know, I'm a little bit surprised to see that this was a Forge as opposed to the Cybernetics, because I don't think he's really under threat of anything. But I could be wrong, and it looks like I might actually be wrong, because that is a lot of Zerglings coming out for Queen. So he's decided that, hey man, you skimped a little bit too much on your early game defense and I'm gonna punish you. And remember, he did get somewhat fast gas. So we've got speed coming in as opposed to the lair. Unless there are cannons going up, Mini could be in trouble here. You know, in ASL, we saw somebody try and go for a bust onto the gateway and forge and it actually ended up working out. Oh no, oh, he tries to close the gap. Oh, there's a slight gap on the left side and Ling's just get in. We've got seven on top of the cannon that instantly dies. Speed is gonna be kicking in pretty soon too, so you gotta factor that in. And that means we have five lings in the base for Queen. Actually, scratch that, we've got seven in here. At least because he opened Gateway first, he does have a decent amount of, of Zealots to defend this, but look at how many probes have been pulled off the line here. He's also, I'm not sure if he canceled the cannon because I wasn't able to catch that, but he's already lost a lot of econ. However, look at the probe count to drone count. It's extremely low. We've got more lings at the front trying to poke in here. Lings coming in from the from the main to try and intercept on top of this cannon. He's going to knock it down, but he's going to lose a lot of zerglings for this trade. 
really good blocking with the probes, eliminating the majority of the links. And there's still more links here. He doesn't send them in. Dude, you got to send them in. There's a huge gap. Now he finally recognized that he is going to run in now. But I think he missed his window of opportunity to, call, to catch these units out of position. These zealots comboed with the probes are going to deal a lot of damage. And you can see a lot of the zerglings are, have already fallen. We've got more lings coming across the map, man. He just wants to end this right here. But I haven't really seen that many zealots die. Maybe like one? So he's still got four left over. I think he's held at this point. So now... Queen needs to start thinking about how does he transition. He's done a lot of damage, a lot of disruption to the mining, but he still only has 13 workers. We've got two links onto this back cannon. I don't think he's going to be able to take that out. The Zealots... Oh, actually, the Zealot Probe combo got really good trades right there. I actually thought that the Zerglings had a better surround than that, but finally, we are going to see a few drones being pumped out now. Meanwhile, the Lair kind of just started it's only halfway done look at how few drones he has in his natural and third base he is surprisingly catching up pretty darn fast 21 to 19 the eco really was disrupted pretty badly for for many and now he has to kind of figure out where he stands in this game his stargate is not that far along well i guess it is pretty far along right because the spire is just now going to start in a second so he's got essentially a completed Stargate versus a just now starting Spire. So n that means that Queen is going to have to do a really good job try and hide these Overlords because I think Mini should be able to pop at least two. Now back in Mini's main, we do see that he is getting the plus one weapon on his Forge. We do have no Cybernetics just yet, but I'm sure that's going to be it right there. And there it is. We've got the hatch coming down for Queen. Probably going to put down a fifth hatch over here in just a minute or so. And the drone count is now starting to really swell up. He's got an eight at his third base, eight at his natural, about nine in his main. So really, really big econ. So actually, Queen has done a really jo good job to catch up. Now, the real question is, how much damage can this one Corsair deal? Because if the Sair can start racking up, multiple overlord kills that will allow in my opinion mini to catch up into this game because i think that the drone powering has already allowed queen to catch up at this point so far the sarah has not found a single overlord he is going to find the one on the left side though so he will take that down and it looks like we may have an interception on the right side so two overlords are going to get picked off and i would say that this is probably maximum amount of damage that mini could have really asked for Back, looking at the Ling count for Queen, he only has 11. Protoss has 6 Zealots. Speed should be kicking. Oh, it looks like he never upgraded speed on his Zealots. So this could be interesting. I wonder what this timing is. He's obviously going to have plus 1 weapon. Is he really going to move out without speed? Maybe he saw something with the Corsairs and determined that, hey, I can't really attack into this. But I'm not really seeing anything that makes me think that. Like, there's no Sunkins. He has plus one pretty soon, right? Feels like this could have been a good timing. I mean, he may still go for it, right? But he's not going to have speed. And that makes these Zealots way weaker than they potentially could be. Scourge were look, looking for some Corsair connections, but not able to find any. We do see the Zerglings are around on the left side. And I think... This could be for a counterattack, but for now, they are just moving in for defense. You can see that the Scourge are kind of just shadowing these Zealots, trying to figure out exactly where they are. He sees that there's no speed still, so there's really still no threat. Speed only halfway done. We could see something like maybe he wants to sync this up with an Archon timing. Just looking at how this build order has unfolded, maybe like 10 Archons. All right, 10 Archons. <laughs> Portos wishes they could have 10 Archons at the nine minute mark. But maybe like 10 Zealots and an Archon mixed in. Now we do actually have Mutas coming in for Queen. It's only five though, but that's still the magic number to one shot probes. And we are going to see these Zealots starting to move out. He, well, maybe not. He is still just hanging around here. I think we are just waiting for this Archon morph and that is going to be the case. But back on Queen's side of the map, he's already gotten his Hydra Den, 
He's gotten six hatcheries up. He's got double sunken. He's got his evolution chamber with halfway done uh, range upgrade. This looks like a great position for Queen, in my opinion. I mean, he's got fantastic econ. He's got 45 drones versus 49. That seems pretty ideal to me. Now, one scary thing is these Scourge and Mutas do intercept the Corsairs. Really good jukes from the Corsairs, but he still ends up losing three of them. The Archon gets off some juicy hits onto the Scourge, managing to actually save a couple of the Corsairs, in my opinion. But we could see that actually a probe also moved down to take a third base at the same time. However, these Sairs are in low numbers now, so they are going to be pushed back. But this is still quite a strong army, even though it doesn't look that menacing. We've got a single Archon here. Can he get the connection he wants onto these Mutas? The Muta control, fantastic. Really dealing a lot of damage to these Zealots, softening them up quite a bit. And back at the natural, double sunken, lings. Yeah, you can't attack here, man. He's going to have to back off. I like how he is taking a third base. Back in his main, he actually doesn't have that many gateways. That could be a little scary. Just four versus a Zerg that already has six hatches up and running feel like if Zerg knew that this was the case, he would just start powering Hydras right now and try and go for a counterplay. Meanwhile, these five Mutas, just a nuisance. They've dealt so much damage. This Archon can't get a hit off. We've got to remember that I think the Mutas have, like, a range... I can't remember the exact number. I was thinking range three, but I actually think Archon has range three. But regardless, I think the Mutas have one more range than the Archon. I can't remember exactly. But, oh, did he get off a hit there? I'm not sure if he did. That Archon's badly damaged now. He may end up actually dying. We do see, I think, a, a Corsair died to another round of Scourge there. Lucky connection. Oh, he, can, he, can, he lost another Corsair. Wow, he's going to lose his entire Corsair count. And these five Mutas... <laughs> They are doing work. Now back in Queen's Main, we still see that he is building up his Hydra count. He hasn't really deviated from his drone count though, only at 45, so that could come back to bite him. He does actually eliminate this, that Archon. That is so funny that that Archon couldn't get off a single shot. But Protoss is still on three bases. He's got a lot of probes too. He's got really good saturation. My opinion in Protoss versus Zerg, you're really looking for around that 60 mark, and that's where we are right now. So good probe count. Zerg finally, oh, look at this. This one egg is blocking these Hydras, and I can already, uh, this egg is blocking these Hydras too, and I can already see it now. There's gonna be an attack somewhere. Zerg's gonna think he has his whole army in position, and actually he's only gonna be fighting with his, uh, with like half of it. I've had that happen sometimes when I'm playing Terran versus Protoss or I'm like defending versus a recall. And I'm thinking like, dude, didn't I send my entire army to defend this? And what actually happened was like there's an SCV blocking my units from getting in between the factories. But finally, it looks like Queen is going to get his army out into the center of the map. He is up supply and he's down worker. So this is an even bigger advantage than it looks in terms of army. However, Protoss has gotten up a sizable gateway count now what's this eight that's what i was curious about right there is the templar count i only see three right there four so only four templars to me that looks a little skimpy i, I gotta be honest i think that's a little bit skimpy but the energy levels okay he's gonna have double storm pretty soon oh actually we had mutas in the main i didn't even see that and we are racking up a lot of damage here. He shuts down the entire mineral line. This brown color is actually kind of hard to follow, so I am going to see if we can shift tab, and it looks like we can't, so that's a bit unlucky. Decent storm there. Clips a few of the mutas. Let me see if I can ally. Oh, that's not what we wanted. Oh, man. Thought if I allied that I could uh, get better colors, but... Unfortunately, I missed those mutas running into the main and racking up some probe kills, but it doesn't seem like they got that many because pro probe count is still at 61. But now, in the natural, doing a lot of damage here. Dodging the storms. See, faded out a lot of storms. Whether or not these mutas die or not, or really get probe kills, I think it was worth to just bait out that many storms. Like, yes, he lost five or six mutas, but he baited out like three or four storms, and we know the real threat is this right here. 
the the hydras the lurkers and these mutas are still just going to be annoying like he's still going to have to worry about them in the future it looks like we had a decent amount of probes killed down to 56 now now back in <laughs> i almost called him hero back in queen's main we do have the hive completing he is going into the melee upgrades now and he's got three evolution chambers so he's getting all of the upgrades really we're gonna have a denial on the fourth base Protoss completely out of position for that he was going to the right side for some reason but you know there's no bases over there i don't know what he was looking to attack but we do have Protoss with a sizable army now what is the templar count is the question to me though it's i see two but do we have more okay we've got two more and we've got about 10 more guns so this army is absolutely huge for Protoss. The majority of it is Dragoons, though. And that means that Protoss is going to be on a clock here, because I'm sure Defiler Mound started. Yep, it is, and it is halfway done. And once that Orden Cloud comes out, I can tell you, as a Terran player, whose basically entire army is range, range units don't do very well into the Orange Cloud. So these Dragoons have a limited lifetime of usefulness. And I think... Mini's got to do something within the next few minutes or so, or this is just going to be a big liability. We've got a huge amount of links on the right side. Looked like he was probably trying to deny a fourth base over here, but we see that there is no fourth base. In fact, Mini's taking the fourth base over here. We're going to have a small engagement here of Lurker or Hydras versus Zealots. Moving on to the ramp like this is a great angle for Zerg, but still the Zealots are going to get into position and the upgrades with the plus two armor really doing a good job but as i say that zerg actually has a surprisingly high amount of upgrades too plus two weapon plus one armor themselves we've got a counter attack on the le left side these lings have adrenaline so this nexus may end up dying look how quickly those lings deal damage and those lings aren't even upgraded he almost ends up killing the nexus more lings more hydras moving in both players approaching max at this point, 200 to 200. We've got more, just, oh, these mutas are just so annoying. He still paid attention to that the entire time. Takes no damage on the mutas, basically. We've got a lurker on the high ground here, which will prevent a fifth base going up over there. Left side, we've got a big attack potentially setting up, but there isn't really a lot of defense for Zerg right here. Look at the, oh my God, that is a ton of Zerglings. And we know that the Zergling upgrade is going to be kicking in pretty soon. He's got plus one weapon soon. He's got the Defilers. He's got Consume, I'm sure, pretty soon. Yep, about to kick in. So the Orange Cloud is going to be in full force. And look at this army. Do you see a single Zealot? I don't see a single Zealot in here. How do you... <laughs> yes, I realize you're going to be able to get through the, skirt, or to, through the Lurkers. But how do we get past this? How do we get past this? All right, well, this is probably... The one engagement that I, I was going to say that maybe Protoss could make work before the Orange Cloud kicks in, but hey, it's already kicked in. And the Mini's going to see the bad news, that he is basically maxed with a pure goon army. I don't think I've ever seen, seen this in Zerg versus Protoss. Finally now, building Zealots, because he desperately needs them. I don't know what else he can build to actually engage into this. I mean, yes, he can build Archons, but... Look at how gas-starved he is. He, despite mining four bases, he's completely gas-starved because he spent all of his gas into these Dragoons. We're going to have an engagement on the right side, but this is this is such a tiny choke. I don't think Protoss can even bust in here. And there's only, what, six Lurkers, five Lurkers? There's not even Dark Swarm. If he engages, yeah, he's just going to get hit in the back by these Lings and Defilers. I'd love to see Plague. There's the Dark Swarm. Where's the Plague at, though? I guess he hasn't gotten it upgraded just yet. Oh, that's a big plague. He hits, what was it, like six Dragoons with the plague? So that's a lot of damage. That is 600 points. Oh my god, that's a more damage. Oh, the ketchup's everywhere. Oh my god. Well, these goons I don't think could be more useless right now. Maybe he'll get through here at mid-right, but the trade is going to be so bad for him. We've got more units just coming in through the left side. All angles, even from the back. And this army got absolutely crushed. Now, I do see Mini's gas is shot up quite a bit. So I'm hoping when I quick click these gateways, we see Templars getting queued up. And we do see some, but actually I am very sad to see that a lot of them were actually goons. 
I just don't see how goons help you in this scenario. He's got great upgrades, two, three, but he needs like 10 Archons right now. Supplies have plummeted for Meanie. Holy crap, was that not the trade he was, he was looking for? These mutas that have been alive the entire game intercept the shuttles. This one's going to die. This one at the right side is spotted by overlords, of course. So I'm sure he's going to loop around and catch this. And he almost kills it with Hydras. We're going to see the Ling flood onto this base. Luckily, there is Triple Storm here and Zealot. So I think he will be able to hold this with the storms. But Mini is in big trouble. Now, I have watched a lot of Mini games. And even in Protoss versus Terran, sometimes he does do this where he starts flooding just Dark Templars. And I think this could be a decent choice, but as I say that, there's 10 Lurkers here and an Overlord. So maybe not. Oh my god, the Lurkers are going to move in here and shut down the space completely. I didn't actually think this was going to get broken with the multiple Zealots and Storm, but not the case. And what can Mini do at this point? He's going to try and counter, but he's down 50 supply. Zerg has the entire mid top right quadrant he's even got the top left base so he's on like six base mining meanwhile Protoss is mined out in their main and natural we see a reaver coming out but that ain't gonna save the day my man i think this is the last ditch effort from mini there's not even observer I, I just realized that did he even build observers this game i don't remember seeing one <laughs> okay well Looks like Mini will clean up this army, but at this point, uh, he is just uh, in a really dire situation. He's going to try and take the left side, mid-left. He still doesn't know about top left. Oh, that's a great storm, but again, there's, there's no observer. So how do you actually get the killing blow onto these lurkers? Well, the answer there is you hit them with another side storm. Top left has the Nidus, has Sunkins going up, so you can't even really attack there. Mini's army is still surprisingly strong because he's so low on probes. Like, it's actually something like 200 versus like 175 because of the worker difference. But there is just so many high tier units for Zerg. Like, the Lurker count is crazy. The Defiler count, I mean, do you really even need more than one Defiler? That's a great plague on top of the Reaver. And this isn't even the majority of Queen's army. Like, this is the real army right here. And right here. And right here. He's just everywhere, man. Well, somehow, Mini has actually gotten up a decent army at this point, I would say. He's gotten like three, three, almost three, three upgrades. He's got Reavers. He's got some powerful AoE with the Archons and the Reavers. He's got the Storm, and that's a great Storm right there. Hitting like six Lurkers in one single Storm. That's the type of trades that Mini needs to get back into this game. So maybe he isn't out of it just yet. Oh, he does bleed a Templar right there. That's another great plague, but hey, at least he got off a lot of kills onto the high tech units of Zerg. He may even catch these lurkers right here, but I'm still concerned that there is only a single observer. He is so gas starved, so I can't blame him for not building that many really focusing more on his units oh this is going to be a massive surround this army looks like it's just going to get eaten up lurkers need to burrow though we're going to have another dark swarm there but really didn't help okay actually did help out quite a bit those archons weren't able to do any damage but supplies from queen have actually whittled down quite a bit down to 147 looks like we had an attempted attack at mid left that's got shut down too so mini Oh, if he can catch this drone transfer, that would have been amazing. But you can see Queen realizing that, hey, I can't get past that. He's going to loop it around to mid-right. Now, what is Zerg's upgrades? We've got 2-3 for the Zerglings. Just crazy. Meanwhile, Hydra's at 3-3. Three, three. This army just looks tiny. It just looks so small. Can three Archons, four Goons, and three Templars really make the magic happen here? I'm gonna say no because supplies have plummeted now and actually we had a link counterattack to mid left that killed the entire probe line and that is GG well played from Queen and he takes down Mini in quite a wild one right from the get-go I gotta say I thought Mini held really well with his probes and zealots but uh, to the link harassment in the beginning and I mean but Queen really powered up really really strongly and those mutas man 
damn, he just dealt so much damage. The Corsairs were ineffective the entire game. And really, once his econ didn't get hindered at all, you can see why I was talking about how this guy is so strong in ZVP. That's going to be it for, for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate your continued support of StarCast, and I hope to see you in the near future.